Time for another stock review, this time first Quantum Minerals. We're going to be looking at the balance sheet, the inside trading, who's buying, who's selling, uh, the, the margins, the whole thing. We're going to be looking at the breaking news. We're also going to be looking at uh, the, the dividend payout history, the back test, you name it. We're covering it all live this morning. All this information, uh, any, any of my members can ask me to make a, f a full review on a stock and I'll do it in great detail. Everything you see here is real and genuine. This is my real trades, my real money, my real positions. I'm not sponsored by anyone to promote anything at all. This is just my, you know, numbers and, and opinion on the stock. And we use the most advanced algorithmic software. So when we run uh, the numbers through, it provides us with a profitability score, uh, a solvency score, and it makes, uh, it enables me to make informed decisions about what I'm about to invest in. And this morning was in a perfect example example, if you wait to the end, I looked at this information here and bought Rivian and went from minus 30% to a profit within seconds. And I'm holding my position now. That's why I use this software. All my members can get this software for free uh, or they can have a premium plan and they get a lifetime discount, which makes my membership for free. I always try to bring the very, very best service to my members. So we're going to start off really, really basic. I'm not going to apologize for that basic information. And then we're going to get more detailed as we go down. Okay, so let's go straight into it and discover what is first quantum uh, minerals. What is it? Okay, let's go straight into uh, our position and let's have a look. Here we go. First quantum, if it's your very first time here, by the way, click subscribe and ring the bell and uh, tap the like button. It makes, uh, it makes a big difference. We are making this video during a live so people can comment if they do a super chat or a martinlucas.com uh, forward slash tip. It will read out their comment on the screen. This video will live forever on our, on our review software uh, website and also on YouTube so people can comment during the making of this. So if it happens, you know why. All all right, let's get straight into it. What is it? First of all, we'll look at the very, very basic chart. You can see straight off, extremely volatile stock, but then a mineral company can be. We see mining companies like this because the cost of uh, the commodity goes up and down like a flipping yo-yo, and uh, that presents great opportunity for uh, this kind of stock. And it's also a dividend stock, but a dividend stock is only good if it pays out regularly and increases. So we'll come on to that. Uh, in a minute. Let's get ready to go. Here we go. First of all, what is First Quantum Minerals Limited? Engages in the production, uh, 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 the production, exploration, and development of copper, nickel, gold, zinc, and acid, and relative additives. It uh, it operates through the following segments: Can Sanchi, Sintanel, Cobra Panama, Las Cruces. Uh, I'm, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, Gulb Mogai. <laughs> some very. Hang on a minute. Some very hard work. Words here I can't uh, pronounce, so I apologize for those. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from my pronunciations. A CEO, uh, a Tristan Pascal, and the first thing I do if I'm going to buy a stock is research the, uh, the CEO and have a little look at uh, the company himself and how he's managed the company and the companies beforehand to get an idea. It's based out of uh, British Columbia, Canada. We've got a Canadian company, been around since 1983. So it has some history, not huge, but some history. Uh, maintenance requirement. In other words, if you are buying this stock using margin, it's regarded as very high risk. You've seen the volatility of it already just on a basic line chart, which we will look deeper on in a minute. But nevertheless, 100% that's the highest margin maintenance requirement there is. So it's regarded as extremely risky if you are using it, if you're buying it on margin. Okay. Market cap, 6.72 billion. The high today uh, is 9.77, 52-week high, 29.79. So you can see exactly uh, the volatility we're talking about. Price to earnings ratio, 10.93. That is the ratio between what you're paying and what you're earning. Now, you need to compare this. No point going, well, that sounds low compared to, say, Tesla, which is running around the 60, 70 now. Sounds good, right? 
you have to compare it to another mining company. So look at Rio Tinto would be a good example. We're not going to do that on this stream, uh, on this video. Otherwise, we'd be here for two hours. Uh, go to an, another mining company and compare between the, er the, the earnings of, say, Rio Tinto, one of my favorites, to this one. And you can get an idea whether this is a good value price to earnings ratio in this sector or not. Now, the dividend yield, 1.61. Dividend paying stocks are great. I like dividend paying stocks. Remember, if, they, if you buy it on your Roth IRA, that's passive income tax free. If you buy it on your main brokerage account, then you'll pay tax on your income, just so you know. Um, even if you don't cash out, you are paying tax on, on dividends. If you do it on your Roth IRA, however, it's tax free income. So I like to buy as many dividend paying stocks on my Roth IRA because basically I'm earning free money if you like. Now, when I say free, of course, if you've got a dividend stock, probably means you don't have much growth. If you have growth and a dividend stock, for example, Apple, Apple has, is a growth stock, but a very small dividend. Other stocks can be really high, 10 or even 20% dividends, but the stock loses value all the time. So the over at the end of the day, it's, you know, horses for courses, six of one and half a dozen of the other. If you've got high dividend, you've probably got no growth or negative growth. So you need to do the maths and work out how often does it pay the dividend? Does it increase it like Coca-Cola, J&J, thereby gets awarded the dividend king status? Or, or or what? So there's no point just going, it's a great dividend if the stock's going down by more than 1.6%. It's kind of pointless. But anyway... There's volume. There's no volume on this stock. This stock doesn't, doesn't do anything. People just hold it by the looks of things. Average volume, 115,000. Volume today uh, is 30,000. It looks like nobody really uh, does much with this. They, you know, it, it, it doesn't move a great deal. When it does move, it moves, it moves a lot, but it doesn't buy and sell much. The, the volume is very low and that's not good. You like a stock with high volume, that way you can get in and out at the right price. If there's no, if there's no volume, it's very difficult to get out at the right price. Okay. Uh, let's move down. Let's move down. We'll cover the news in a moment and we're going to go into much more detail in a, in a few seconds. I told you we're going to cover uh, the financials of the stock and we're going to cover the news of the stock. At the back test, we're also going to look look, look at the, uh, the inside trading and all the rest of it. So bear with me. We're just doing it simple right now. Uh, Morningstar, very basic uh, review. They're saying it's a, it's a hold. It's not a buy or a sell. It's a hold. Uh, now, who else buys this company? Straight off the bat, we can see Ford. Now, Ford, uh, a company, I don't know why anyone owns Ford, quite frankly. You don't make any money uh, with Ford. Um, it just goes sideways forever. Um, but uh, there you go. Uh, kind of, you know, it gives you an idea of the sentiment of the stock. Plug power, very high risk. Uh, I get, I get, I understand why uh, you'd be in plug because you are looking at uh, a, a similar, uh, similar sector. You know, hydrogen. I mean, I'm not saying you mine hydrogen, but you're looking at the same sort of uh, same industries. I think Intel. I'm not in. I'm not in Intel. Lithium. Now, this is an interesting one. As Elon Musk has often spoke about, um, lithium is, is what you need to be in. Not lithium mining, lithium refining. Um, there's uh, untold opportunities, opportunities available here for lithium refining, not just mining, but refining. Okay, so we can see... Um, but just touching on, on that again, I prefer not to buy a lithium mine or a lithium refining mine. I prefer to buy an ETF with lithium uh, mining or refining in it. That way I'm not exposed to one particular mine. We all know you want to be in lithium and you want to be in lithium uh, refining. Everybody knows that. It doesn't, doesn't take a rocket scientist to work that out with all the EVs. We need untold you know, infinite amount of uh, refined lithium. However, I don't know which, which mine is going to do best. So I'd rather buy an ETF, exchange traded fund, a basket like the S&P 500 of lithium mine, mining stocks. I haven't yet, I never found one I really like yet, but uh, that's what I'm looking for. Not an individual mine. I would rather buy an ETF of the mines. Anyway, 
Okay, let's now uh, move on and let's start by looking at some news first of all. Uh, let's go into some news. So first thing we'll do is look at this uh, and, and then we'll look at the website as well. In fact, we'll look at the website first. This is, um, this is their website. First Quantum Minerals is deeply saddened to announce the passing of its co-founder and chairman, Philip K. Har Pascal, on September the 19th, 2023. This is their headline on their website right now. Very, very sad. There we go. Uh, if we move on, uh, looking down, unique expertise. We unlock value from complex mineral projects through management, technical and operating skills to deliver rewarding jobs for employees, sustainable development for local communities and returns for our shareholders. Uh, a precious element. We are committed to maintaining water quality, minimizing water consumption and transparency in how we achieve this. We're just looking down and getting a flavor of the website. Let's look at the investor page. Uh, and let's see how things look here. Let me just zoom in a little bit, make it a bit clearer for you. Uh, join our community. Our global operating assets uh, generate strong cash flow and earnings to support first Quantum's growth and diversification strategy. We are one of the world's top 10 copper producers and also hold significant interest in nickel. I'll just go one uh, t tiny bit more. Let's read this comment, this paragraph here. Why to invest? Why would you buy? This is according to the company itself, of course. Why our brown uh, With our brownfield and greenfield projects, the company sees a pathway to 1 million tonnes of annual production, making us one of the world's top producers of this, uh, of this metal. We were, we were founded on, on belief um, in the fundamentals of copper. And we expect, um, well, thank you very much, Tom Fowler, just subscribe to my channel. Uh, we were founded on our belief in the fundamentals of copper and we expect demand for copper will continue to grow. We are confident that sustainable energy initiatives and electrification of transport will make a significant contribution to long-term demand growth generated by middle-class consumption in developing nations as well as uh, develop developing uh, as developed uh, economies there are a few new projects uh, of scale in the global pipeline to meet future demand our cobra panama operation is the only major new source of copper to be commissioned in the past decade all right that's uh, why you should invest and just finally a significant copper producer with a meaningful nickel business a platform of cash generating and and geo and and, and uh, geographically diversified operation operating assets, a portfolio of world class copper deposits, a highly skilled management, technical, and operation teams. After more than twenty years as a growing and global mining company, we are all well positioned to continue to deliver growth and generating lasting value for our investors. Okay. Brilliant. Some news, and then we're going to go into the uh, the financials. We're going to look at all the the deep dive with the financials. That's what uh, that's what you want to see. So stick around for that in a few moments time. Plus, we have the the back test and the uh, the, the 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 dividend uh, payout history. So this is just uh, yesterday. Uh, First Quantum warns of arbitration as Panama weighs copper contract. Let's have a look into, into this just a moment. Uh, this is their mine here. November 26, Canada's first quantum uh, intends intend to start arbitration against Panama. The Central American Nations Trade uh, Ministry and the company said on Sunday as Panama's top court uh, considers uh, annulling a copper contract that opponents call unfair. Okay, October the 20th, uh, Panama's government approved a contract for First Quantum to operate the copper at Cobra Panama mine. It included a 20-year mining right with an option to extend for another 20 years. In return, the miner agreed to pay Panama 360, three, Panama 375 million a year. Okay. 
just uh, finish this and then I'll go into the, the numbers. Opponents claim the contract favours the miner too much as the mine represents about 5% of the country's GDP and some 1% of global copper output. Protesters have demonstrated over the mine's environmental and economic impacts and alleged corrupt practices in its approval. A spokesperson for Quantum, for First Quantum, con confirmed to Reuters the company sent one notification of intent to start arbitration proceedings. We would need to keep an eye on this if we were investing in this company to know how this goes, how this plays out. Right, let's now go into the, um, the financials of the company. Let's have a look, deeper dive into this. So first of all, we're going to look at the, uh, the intrinsic value. But bearing in mind, if you are using the intrinsic value to trade, which I do and invest, you need to, need to look at the warnings as well and, and do more research around it. You need to make sure that you are fully aware of what this actually means. Let's go to the, ba the best case. The best case scenario is it's undervalued currently at 83%. Great. Fantastic. Starting off with a big tick. Uh, ba the base case, which is what we regard as more as a, as a more uh, sensible way to look at a stock. It is undervalued by 67%. Very, very nice. Worst case, 39%. So, so far, the intrinsic value is looking very, very good. Very, very good indeed. Wall Street targets 147%, good relative value up 61%, DCF negative 29%, intrinsic value 39%, all looking good, positive cash flow, R uh, ROIC is increasing, okay, that's all looking good so far. And there are no warnings, no warnings, so I will give you that now. If we look at the uh, a value that's really good, sometimes it can be called a value trap when the intrinsic value says it looks good. However, uh, we need to dive deeper before we use that as, as a single metric, which you should never do anyway. But there are no warnings here, so we are able to be confident that this is a good valuation. Okay, let's have a look. Possible, here we go. Here's the warning here. Possible value trap detected. Okay, this is what I was talking about a moment ago. A value trap occurs when a stock appears inexpensive based on fundamental analysis but fails to reach its intrinsic valuation over time, often due to underlying issues not reflected in quantitative data. Remember, we run all our information through algorithmic software, you cannot just use the uh, intrinsic value uh, as a buy or sell. You've got to look at other things, okay? Scrutinize beyond the numbers, accessing long-term potential. This is why I've always said charts are not enough on their own. Fundamentals are not enough on their own. You know all of this, but what I do and how I invest is I make relationships with people at the company. I like to uh, invite you know, people onto my show. I talk to them through X and Instagram and learn about the actual fundamentals and the, the reality on the ground of the company. And then I like to buy the company, not the stock price. Very much like what, what, what Warren Buffett does, which is why consistently I beat the market and Warren Buffett. And I've, you see every day, right? So there could be a potential, not, not, not necessarily a potential valuation trap. Okay, let's move on down. Let's look at the financials. End of the day, what it's all about, right? Uh, if we zoom in here, the financials are 7.1 billion on the most recent range. We are moving steadily up. That was done on um, June 29th of uh, uh, 23. And now estimates, uh, sorry, September 29th, 23. We're now moving um, uh, into estimates and the estimates are moving up. This is looking good. So their expectations are looking good uh, and and the, uh, the re revenue is going up. All right, operating income also going up and it's 33% up in the most recent range. Net income is also going up 610 up 53% in the most recent range. Uh, operating cash flow, 1.9 billion, up 4% on the most recent range. And we do, it does look like this stock is secular, where it uh, goes in, in, a, in a, like a curve like this. 
And you often see this because uh, certain stocks, you know, do better at different times of the year. And generally it's rising. So you are looking to buy it in these little curves, which is where we are right now. So right now might be a good time to buy it. We can just sort of see that December, it kind of always uh, it falls off if we look here which is where we are now. Anyway, capital expenditure, um, it's uh, 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 they spending more uh, over the last uh, range, up 6%. So we are investing in the company. Let's look at the balance sheet now. Scroll down to the balance sheet. Balance sheet is very, very important. What we don't want to see is more liabilities than assets. And we certainly don't want to see 80, 90% either. We want a strong balance sheet of assets massively greater than liabilities. We don't mind liabilities as long as they're ongoing, but we don't like we don't like large amounts of debt, particularly at high interest rates as they are right now. Admittedly, we expect them to come down, but we don't like to see that. Twenty four point eight billion of assets, thirteen billion of liabilities. So far, so good. Uh, short and uh, cash and short term investments, one point three billion. Okay. Uh, receivable 683 million. Let's look at the liabilities and look for long-term debt. Long-term debt. We don't like long-term debt, but it's 6.1 billion. So it's a small amount compared to their assets. However, long-term debt does actually make up 46% of their liabilities. We don't like, we don't like to see that. Okay. Specifically, with the amounts of uh, uh, interest rates that they are uh, where they are right now. Anyway, the efficiency of the company. Efficiency of the company is where we look at the moat. Uh, if, the, if the company has a good margin, it can protect itself from competitors and uh, it's making it can make some profit and so on and so forth. Right. We like to see the margins increasing if we can. And uh, the margins are 29%. Now, again, we need to compare that to other mines. There's no point just looking at that uh, on its own because it's nothing compared to a software company. So we do need to compare that elsewhere. But nevertheless, 29% looks quite good. And what's good about it is it's been going up. You can see how it's secular, how it sort of pits and falls and pits and falls. But each time it slowly sets... Um, it's a higher position. So that's quite good. The gross margin, 26%. The net margin is 14%. FCF margin, 15%. Moving in the right direction, no doubt about it. All right. The fundamental scores. Now then, this is very, very important. Profitability, 53. We're not green. We're not an apple, um, but we are 53. That's good, I would imagine. I Just on a first look at mine, a mining business, that's pretty good. Uh, we're looking at 53% out of 100. Uh, it's, it's not bright green. It's not red. It's, that's okay. 53% profitability, positive, uh, free cash flow. Uh, uh, our ROIC is increasing positive operating income and positive gross profit. All of that is good. Uh, FM solvency score, uh, low DE, uh, long-term solvency, short-term solvency, average Altman Z score, average Altman Z score, 42%. It's not likely to go bust anytime soon. It's got a nice runway. Um, it's amber. Amber's fine. When you start getting deep reds, low 15s, that's when we start talking about, could this company go bankrupt? 42 is fine. We'd like to see it higher, of course. If they can pay down that debt, then uh, with their margins they've got and their balance sheet and the cash they've got, potentially, I guess, it's um, possible they could uh, improve on the solvency score. Let me just scroll to the top just a minute and let's see if we got any news from them. No, we didn't, from their last earnings. I wanted to see if we had any news from their last earnings. Anyway, let's move down to uh, Wall Street targets. Wall Street target... Uh, there's no point taking any risk on anything uh, like this because it is, uh, you know, the way it trades unless you've got on the average score a decent uh, a, a, a decent upside. Otherwise, you just buy the S&P and we're going to compare that in a minute. But anyway, the highest forecast, 216% uh, increase in where we are today. That's good. 151% on the average and even on the low, 71%. This looks very, very good. Wall Street seem to like this. They're giving it very, very good ratings. Competitive landscape. Now, compared to the margin and the balance sheet and everything else, you need to compare. I'm not going to do it on this video, but I will give you a link so you can go and uh, compare all these businesses to see how they compare. Because if you're going to buy this mine, you've got to ask yourself, well, why not buy 
another mine. I don't know. Anyway, you can decide. Now then, uh, let's move down to um, some some more information here. Uh, inside trading. And we'll also look at uh, if there's any um, shorting of the stock. Let's have a look. Here we go. This is what I want to look for. Uh, it's got some short interest, but very low. Uh, to give you an example, if you look at Apple, things like that, you'll see like under a percent, 0.7. Whereas GameStop, when it's short squeeze, it was 100%. Anything over 20% is regarded as excessive. 1.41 uh, is, uh, you know, most stocks have some short interest. Even Apple has some short interest, but 1.41 isn't of a concern. Uh, there is some, there is some negative, you know, negative sentiment, but not a great deal to be fair. That isn't, uh, that isn't a major, major headache here for this company. Uh, let's have a look at, uh, if we do have any inside trading going on with this company, let me see, uh, scroll down to the bottom. Um, no, we don't have that information available on this particular stock, so we don't have that. Sometimes I'm able to show you if uh, anyone on the inside has been buying or selling the stock, but I'm not seeing that information. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compare this to the S&P. Then we're going to look at the dividend uh history as well. Because if you're buying it for the dividend, then you need to know how often it pays the dividend out. All right. So let's go over look and look at that. So first of all, we'll go into the dividends and uh, let's have a look. Um, let's go back. This is um, right. Forecast amount, declared amount. Uh, it's next. Um, Paid right. We don't have we don't have information going back that far. Um, 25th of July uh, is the uh, ex declaration date. Ex dividend date is the 25th of August, and they paid on 19th of September 20.8 20 20.8 20 cents. Uh, and uh, the the declared amount was actually eight, but they actually paid uh, 20.8. Uh, it doesn't actually show what they paid before. So I'm getting some uh, unclear information here. It, sh it showed um, declared uh, 13 cents, 16 cents going back, but it doesn't show what they paid out. No, I don't know. It's un it, so, so basically, it's inconclusive information. I would need to uh, dive deeper, but my um, dividend uh, software is showing uh, that they didn't pay out. They declared, but they didn't pay out. I'm not saying they didn't, but it would uh, require more investigation. It doesn't look like they paid out. I don't know. I'd need to check that. But anyway, they did pay out in September 20 cents. You can see that here, 20.8. And it was declared that it was 8 cents. So that was good. But uh, the history looks a bit sparse. Anyway, moving on. Here is our back test. Because if you're going to invest... Uh, at least you want to consider the options, right? If you put in 2011, so some good history here, $10,000 in the S&P, you would have 42, you'd have four x If you'd have put $10,000 and reinvested your dividends, which would suggest to me that they'd not paid them out, that kind of backs up what we just saw, you'd be down at 7,893. You'd have lost money over the term. The S&P, as you can see, is in blue, in blue, I beg your pardon, and first quantum is in red. Uh, and it's starting to, you can see it's very volatile, starting to trend up since 2021. Um, but uh, looking at this, looking at its potential not payout, and if, if, if you do find more information, let me know, and I, and, and I will, will do a, a follow-up to this um, video. I would suggest that the S&P is the better value. Um, boring, however, it's, um, it's going to be much safer. If you're buying a mine rather than an, an ETF of a mine, uh, I'd just rather buy the S&P, to be quite honest. Um, however, now is potentially a good price to buy it. If you were going to buy it now, potentially. It's not one for me. I would rather just simply buy... Uh, I would rather simply buy um, an ETF or 
just be done with it and uh, ju and just buy um, the SMP anyway. Anyway, there is my uh, first initial review on uh, first quantum ticker symbol F Q V L F. I might do a follow up if I find out more information uh, or anyone requests it. Click above my head and below in the description, and you can get all my links for my uh, newsletter. You can get all my reviews. I'll post all my reviews over here at the end of the video. You can see more there. And if I ever do any earnings, they'll be posted there as well. And uh, if you are a member of my channel, you can get a lifetime discount, which basically makes my membership for free on Alpha Spread, which is what we use, the most advanced software, I believe. And uh, if you use my referral as well, which is above my head and in the description, I will also you'll also get a free plan as well using my link and uh, you can uh, try it out and you can have a couple of shares, stocks a month, or you can uh, use the, uh, the, the, the code that I give you on that link and you can then get a lifetime discount. You might uh, prefer to, to, to go full on premium. All right, there we go. That's another review done. Thank you very much indeed. When this video comes out, uh, those that wanted me to, to, to make this video, uh, which was Cham, if you uh, do a super thanks underneath the video, YouTube see that people liking it and sharing it and watching it, and they're even doing a super thanks, it then will suggest the video and push it out to more people, and more people can learn about first quantum material uh, minerals. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the review. As always, until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.